Well, here we are at the Sculpture Garden of the National Gallery of Art on the Mall in Washington, D.C., right on Constitution Avenue. And this is an interesting project because, like all landscape projects, it comes in the wake of a long series of other things that happened on the site. Well, when I started this project, we realized that the center of it, occupying a great amount of space, was a circle, a big, dumb circle that had a double row of trees around it. But I didn't know what to do except to try and come up with a series of outdoor spaces of different sizes and shapes that, like a gallery, where you could contrast and compare. You could see one sculpture and then look to another and see the two of them, or see a sculpture isolated and be able to move about it. So the, the plant palette, my partner Dennis McGlade and Bob Bedell, those two and I, really worked on the plant palette, spent a lot of time in specialty nurseries trying to do things. We ended up screening the transverse behind with a tapestry, a big tall tapestry hedge. Uh, we opened a couple of key views to the domes of various things. And then when we came to designing the fountain, the question was, what should it be like? And I remembered that Andre Le Note in a basin near the, near the uh, Louvre in Paris, just outside the, the Tuileries, had taken a, an old Roman profile that has a kind of curve up and, a, and an arch that came down and dropped it down next to the water to get less reflection so that the water had a bigger presence and there's less frame and more picture. So I thought, aha, I'm gonna do that. Now the benches, when I decided that we'd like to do, I thought you really want a wall around the back so you've got your back to something and you're under the trees and you're looking out. That's, that relates to an idea that Jay Appleton had quite a few years ago when he wrote about prospect refuge theory in landscape. Well, that notion still operates. We like to sit with our back to the wall so nobody comes up behind us. We like that comfort. We also like looking out in the sun and watching the passing parade. And we also kind of like the trees and the birds and the shade overhead. So there was a palette that we could use. There was a kind of vocabulary that we picked up from the site and the place. And when these jets come on, you'll notice they make these big arches. And as a matter of fact, when there's no wind, they, they go all the way to the middle and bang into each other and fall in a great cascade. Most design fields are plagued by the problem of originality and precedent. But this is a pretty good example of a place that is laden with precedent. The Freer Gallery was designed by uh, successful high-end architect from New York of the period, they designed the lights that you see in this circle, nowhere else in this uh, garden. Uh, I, I found them over at the Freer, and I thought, how wonderful these are. When I was working on Bryant Park, I'd also found a torchere that I reproduced to actually, to extend a feeling of a place without literally, you know, um, doing a neoclassical piece. The other thing was the fence. We needed some big stanchions at the gates. So I looked around and I looked over at the, at the uh, archive and I looked at the gallery and there was a Greek uh, motif that was fish scales. And I said, well, let's just use the fish scale motif. It's in the repertoire of pattern. We'll have that, but it also, there's also this kind of, it's over there, it's over here, it's a translation, and yet it's a new, fresh use.